gone through my basket of scraps over here, slightly off camera, and found I found this piece of gray fabric that I cut to about the size we're going to use, um, give or take. So for the mug rug and small rack, we're going to have a finished size of about um, six by nine. So I wanted to make sure my project was, my background piece was cut a little larger than that. If you feel really comfortable with your skills and you want to go ahead and cut it six and a half by nine and a half because you need a set of cutting instructions, then seven by ten, six and a half by nine and a half, however you want to uh, field that is fine. So at this point, I've taken everything out of this basket. I haven't gone to anything else, so I've stayed complete with my challenge and I haven't cheated at all. In this uh, particular quilt pattern and this idea that I have, I'm gonna be doing some applique. And we're gonna be doing it with our Petal Pal keychain and its tiny round cohort. So now that I have my background and all of my beautiful fabrics all picked out, I'm going to use two different methods of machine applique to do this project. So the first method I'm going to use um, is a fusible web method and I'm going to use a product called Barely There. I just happen to be finishing up a bolt of this and I've got my instructions for my fusible which is really important. And then I'm also going to use Terio Magic and I get asked a lot how I go to spray Terio Magic. Um, if you've seen my Serial Magic video, you kind of already see it, but since I'm actually working, let's spray some on here. I have my Terial Magic spray, so I'm going to lightly spray, just like kind of like I would a starch, making sure, and you can see um, I have a couple little dark spots. Those are little bubbles because this is a jet stream um, tip, even though it's on spray, it's very thick. So I just sprayed my fabric. Now you could also use an iron-in stabilizer if you have something left over from a t-shirt quilt or something, you wanna do that, you could. But this is a perfect opportunity to show you really what Terio Magic does. And you saw my background piece was kind of limp. So I'm gonna set my stuff down. So as I've been talking, I've just been letting this dry and I'm gonna take my iron and just run my iron right over the piece. I'm pressing it on the front. You can press it on the front or the back. And what's happening is the Terio Magic is now getting um, dry and adhering to the fibers of the fabric. And you'll see um, it's still a little damp, so let's just ride over it a little bit. But this is a perfect way um, when I'm doing it in quilts that work with blocks this is a perfect way to get your backgrounds of your blocks done. So now you saw me pick up the piece of fabric. It was kind of limp and I just want to show you now. Can you see this fabric has a bit of body and it's, I can kind of turn it and it's more paper-like. So it's much stiffer than any kind of a starch could get it. I have a couple of ends here that are undone. So if I were doing this on my project at home, I might take my fat quarter saturate it, go have a cup of coffee. And by saturation, you saw me, you saw what I did. Um, and I might come back and, and once it's dry and press it out, you can do it that way or you can give it a minute. Um, and I'm gonna hit this again, just to show you that if for some reason your fabric isn't quite as stiff as you want it to be, you'll hit it again. So here are my greens. I have one, two, three, four, five different greens. In order to cut my petal template out for this project, I'm going to go ahead and adhere some fusible to the back of my scraps. Now, you don't need a lot. We're only, for this little project, I'm only going to make five of these in green and five in red. Um, you can make more, you can make less, but that's what I'm going to do. So because I'm, I've got five different pieces of green, I'm going to use all five. So let me go ahead and adhere um, the fat, the uh, fusible to the back of the fabric, and then I'll give you some tips on cutting. All right, in preparation for using your little templates, um, if you've ever seen my how not to have ruler slippage video, um, you'll know this tip already, but um, as you can see on the back of my template, there's a little piece of tape. What is it? It's this stuff. This is 
This says Transpore by 3M. It's Next Care, I think, at Walgreens, um, or it's Walgreens Medical Tape. Let me show you what it looks like. It's clear medical tape. You've seen it in every drugstore in the first aid department. You see the little perforations on it? What I do with this, every ruler that I have, so this is a Creative Grids ruler, and it's got little non-stick pads on the back. But in order to keep my rulers from slipping as I'm moving them on the fabric, I take this tape, and I don't know if you noticed just then, but you can take the tape every place that it has a perforation, which is everywhere, you can just peel, and it cuts in a perfectly straight line. You can also do it in the opposite direction. So if you're doing English paper piecing and you have little templates, that you want to lay down to fussy cut, you can peel it and rip it to the size, exact size you need. And so what I'm doing right now is running it down the back. This is really inexpensive stuff. It's like $1.50 a spool. The spool will last you forever. Um, so I'm taking my Creative Grids ruler and can you see how I've got, I put tape here, 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 and here. All right, on the ruler, there it goes, so you can see it's not shiny anymore. I just placed it along the back of the ruler. Here's a good dark piece of fabric you can see. I can still see all the lines on my ruler, so I can see right through the tape. Um, what the tape does, it's got little tiny perforations on it, and it, it winds up making friction on the bottom of your templates, and it just keeps them from sliding. So you just take a little piece of it, and you put it on the back of your template and now when we go to put the template onto the fabrics to cut around the curve we won't have um, any slipping problems. So I'm, I'm laying my little template down on top of the um, piece of fabric there. I'm gonna grab my cutter. I'd probably use a slightly smaller cutter. Um, cut only away from you. Put your two fingers on the template and as you can see it didn't slide because I have my little piece of tape and you can cut and then I'm just going to turn my fabric so that I can cut the other side. So if your template moves, if you're, if when you go to move it, your template shifts on your fabric. It's not a catastrophe. Um, as a matter of fact, let me show you what happens. All right, I'm gonna press down on the template and I'm gonna press on my cutter and just go around one curve. And then I'll turn it up. Oh, I took my fingers off and it moved. No, no big deal. So I've given myself some room on the front and the back side of it. So I'm just now going to, hopefully you can see it, I'm just gonna move my template back and line it up on the line. And I've got it right on the edge. So now I can go ahead and cut the other side. I don't know if you noticed, but when I moved, um, the template didn't move, <laughs> and that's the point. Okay, and then I'm getting my little leaves together. Those are gonna be the leaves of the project. You can take your little pieces, and right now, very simply peel the paper off the back. Now, before you go trying to take your nail and pick at the corners, let me show you the easy way to do this. So I'm gonna lay my piece down on the table and I'm gonna take a pin, lightly touch it, and carefully score the back of the paper. So now I have a place to sort of bend and pull from and it doesn't damage the points, all right? And I have my whole piece. So go ahead and, and remove the paper from your pieces. You wanna watch that demo again? Just very lightly score it and then you can bend and tear the paper. And that's with everything, not just with this project. Now, I don't know if you know this, but if you have a complicated layer design, you could actually adhere the pieces together before you put them on your background. And that's what I'm gonna show you how to do. So I have a piece of, I have an applique pressing sheet here. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is place my pattern underneath the applique pressing sheet. And now I can, I have a safety zone here, and I can see what's happening underneath. So I know that my green petals are gonna be underneath my red petals. And I can place my green petals 
just about on the spot of where I want them to be all the way around the design and when I get the placement where I like it I'll just leave it there for a moment because I want you to see what you can do that's about right and then I know that I'm gonna put my red petals over top and that's what's gonna make our design so I don't have anything adhered yet because I might want to move stuff around so this is where it says my red petals are supposed to go. And I'm going to put a center on it. It's going to be cute. So that's how I want my design to be. And I know I want my design to be that. So now that I know, I can go ahead and press these together to create my piece. And you can put, if you wanted to go ahead and put your center of your poinsettia down, you can. But right now, I just want to show you this little method. You don't have to do this for a long period of time. You just set your iron down on top of the design. And what happens, now this iron is not hot, so I have to wait for it to get a little bit hot. What happens is the pieces then adhere to each other. And if we do this correctly, when it cools and we peel it up, we'll be able to take this design, which is now all stuck together, and pop it off and take it over to our background. Now, it has a lot of edges sticking out, so you just want to be careful. So I'm very lightly peeling it up. But if you had a very complicated flower and you had a lot of petals that went with your complicated flower, um, they would all be coming up at the same time and you'd be able to lay it all out and fuse it just how you wanted it before you put it on your background. And that's a handy thing to know. Now, I had one that wasn't quite touching very well, so it's come apart on one side, but that's okay. Again, we're not gonna panic. We're doing this in real time. So you can see what's happening. Oop. Most of it stayed together. They're just barely overlapped, but you get the whole point. So now I can bring it over to, let's just move this a minute. I can bring it over to my background. Put my applique pressing sheet back down. And let's say I want my poinsettia to go, I kind of want it to go off um, the side a little bit because this is going to be my mug rug and I really want I want you to be able to see there's a poinsettia but I really don't want it to be the whole of the mat right and this would be a whole lot easier to place if these hadn't come apart but they did that's okay like I said we're real-time uh, project here so not everything works perfectly but I pretty much have that looking exactly the way I want. And I've got a little bit of the red coming off, one of the greens coming off. I really like the way that looks. You can see my background. So now that I have everything on my background the way I want it, now I'm gonna press it based on the instructions. And that's a six minute adhere, or six minutes. I keep saying minutes. It's a six second adhere. So you just count to a thousand on six seconds, and that's my fusible. Again, those are my fusibles instructions, not yours. Okay? So, we'll get this done. Lickety split. All right? Now I've got it all fused down, and it's a little stuck to my little applique pressing mat. That's why I hung it off there like that. This is what my little mat looks like. Look how cute. All right, this is my little poinsettia petal mat. Now, I have some open seams right here or some open little points right here, so I'm gonna put a little center on mine. Um, I have in my bundle with my um, mini petal, I've given you the little circle. So this is a one inch circle, and if you see, it fits pretty perfectly right over top of that. So that's what's on your drawing. You can cut yours kind of wavy. You can do teeny tiny little circles if you like. You can do whatever it is that you want that makes you happy, but I'm gonna put a little gold circle right in the center of that. 
All right, what I've decided to do with my little circle, because I want to cut it using my tiny little circle, I'm going to show you real quickly how I'm going to go about doing that. And instead of using a fusible for this one, I'm going to use the Terio Magic. Okay, gang, let's do a quick little demo on how I would cut this circle. So I have my little stiff fabric. You can see it is completely stiff as a board, and I did that with one spray of the Terio Magic. Um, and let me grab a little piece of tape, because I just noticed that my circle doesn't have any tape on it. We definitely want to put our tape on the circle to keep it from sliding. Now, one of the things that I want to show you is on the circle, there is a set of crosshairs. It runs through the center on both sides. So what I want to do, and I have an option here, but for this one, because it's so small, I'm going to do it in quarters. So if I were to fold my fabric like this, which would be tall enough to get that circle out, and actually we really don't need it, quite that tall it really only needs to be about like that it needs to be tall enough that you can lay that line that uh, engraved crosshair on the fold and then you see if I were to take my rotary cutter and go around like that I would then have a half a circle and I could open it up into a full circle this is a very tiny circle to to walk around so I'm actually gonna fold it in half again. Now I have four layers of fabric I'm dealing with, a very small template, and Terio Magic Spray. Now, let me see if I can get it close enough. I've got two folds, and I'm going to put both folds right there in the quarter pie. Okay? That's what I'm going to do. Two folds in the quarter pie. I'm going to hold very, very hard and I'm going to take my rotary cutter, and I'm being really cautious. I would use a smaller rotary cutter if I had one handy. Um, an 18 millimeter will not work with these templates, but a 28 millimeter with a small nut will work with these templates. That seemed rough, but when I open it up, I'm going to have a perfect circle. That's not something you can do with a rotary cutter very easily. So that's why we put that cute little crosshair in the middle. Now the one inch circles are very tiny and they're very hard to use, but the bigger circles are not. So if you need, if you're working on your uh, pedal project and you need a big circle, it's plenty. Uh, the, the one and a half, the two inch, two and a half are pretty, pretty large and they're fun to, to use. That's what mine will look like with my little yellow dot. Now let's go over to the sewing machine because I want to show you what to do with your stitches when you're stitching around this. And now we're only working on this one project. Um, I've given you the patterns to do the other projects and some rough measurements on how to cut and do these types of things. So um, that'll be part of your free pattern, but this gives you an idea of how I've done mine and finished my little mug rug. And so let me show you the stitching part because this applies to all of the projects. 